Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Phoenix Wright Just For All. Today, we're going back to court. How fun. I believe we were into, yeah, okay, we were in intermission. Intermission, recess, whatever you want to call it. Rabble, 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 rabble. Court will now reconvene. I assume both parties are ready. Hey, yeah, yeah, your honor. Yes, your honor. <laughs> I understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I, uh, that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell us the court, the, tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Ms. Impact's suicide note. Y yes Your Honor. Unfortunately... We have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. What? Yeah, what? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... This note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. Okay... Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what's going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however... It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Carita. Really? That's... interesting. Mr. Carita? Well, well. It looks like Ms. Impacts never left the suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about Ungard. Hold the fu- uh, hold the goddamn phone. Okay. So she kills herself. Tragic. Absolutely. Um. Doesn't leave a note from what Mia just said. And then Juan wrote one pretending to be her suicide note. That is amazing how this game can have me hate two people so much so quickly however your honor even though this suicide note is indeed fake mr and god could not have known that and so that facts mean that so that facts that facts and so that facts remain unchanged and i know it's a simple typo so that fact not facts remain unchanged i mean i guess maybe facts but the way that the way that it's structured right now is actually just hurting my head. Acting on the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. This theory that a guard had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Um. The, the, I mean, I'll I present evidence. The defense believes that the theory that the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it is impossible for Mr. Ungar to not have known it was fake. Um... Uh, oh, because he was sp buying on them? But that, well, okay. You said it was in the house, though. So maybe it's this one? Uh, yeah, because Edgeworth said that he was spying on him in his house. So maybe not the camera, but the transmitter? Oh, music stopped. I'm a genius. What is this little... Uh, that's No, that's not what I presented. I presented the, tr the transmitter thing. What is this little item called again? Uh, a, a video camera, you goddamn idiot. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right. A camera. I have one of these in my shoes. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Engard knew of the existence of this note because he was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? If that were true... Then this means Mr. Engard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Potentially. Like, how how recent has it been forged? 
Like, if he forged it years ago when, like, he wasn't spying on him, like, right after her suicide. Then again, maybe the guard was always spying on him. I don't know. So the defendant, the defendant knew that this suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ingard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. He says, doing like a magical gesture. Uh, but Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ingard monitored Miss Karita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote uh, the note in a place Mr. Ingard didn't know about. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edward. Why don't you show me some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Order, order, Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who have dug your own grave. <sighs> as I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, are you... You are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution cannot prove Mr. Ingard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you th there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. I drew the stuttering. It's not like him at all. Or, or is on guard taking the stand? Unusual. Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley the killer to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer a question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. Who is this witness? It is... It is... Um... Yes, go on. Who is it? The man himself. Wait. What? Where's Maya? Mr. Shelley the Killer. Oh, Mr. the Killer. Wait. Shelley the Killer? Um, you mean the killer. Uh, I mean the assassin. Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright? Yeah? Is it alright with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is alright to do this. Very well then, the prosecution calls the witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way to way left to us? Now then, witness, um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please. Oh, okay. I was like, what do you mean you have, like, you have Shelly the killer? <laughs> like, where's Maya? Because I'll just throw in the towel <laughs> at this point. Um, very good, sir. My name is Shelly the killer, and I'm a professional assassin. I, I say... What is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. Dekilla will testify to this court. So that's me this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we cannot even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some proof that you are, in fact, Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please wait a moment. I'm... I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! Uh, uh, a voice. Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. It looks like we have to run into we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Are you this dense, Judge? Can you not tell what's going on? Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances. So, now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak anything else, and that would be. 
the request of the client, you killed Mr. Wong Karita. Is that correct? It is as you say. I indeed, I did indeed kill Mr. Karita. Gulp. Now that we have that answered, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. Shelly the killer. What is, what is he going to say? I very much doubt he's going to say it was mad on guard. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. That is the reason I am here today and this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Uh, hmm. Mr. Killer seems to be a very clever man. I must say he seems to be mocking us. Maybe? While he may appear to be our, our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. DeKilla is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his client and himself? Hmm. Seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Very well, Mr. Wright. Are you, are you ready to cross-examine your witness? Uh, yeah, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. So keep calm and carry on? I get a cup that states that. And a shirt, too. Uh, press? <laughs> we can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you not know the words f first, what the word first means? Sorry, go on. Well, it appears this one is one knows that you can't badger Mr. Wright. Well, I'm gonna do it anyways. That's only because you can't know you don't know about my situation. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my client are dis my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. Oh yeah, but he's like, he had like a video recording of you. Can I present the date, the tape thing there? And was it that you're testifying? Why is it that you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the, the killer name so my client can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust, like Matt wants to? It was never. It has never happened before. And if it ever did, yes, that person wouldn't be my client for very long. It would certainly... That's enough! Uh, please, no more. Very, very well. It was only hypothetical anyways. And, okay, so... Is that what's gonna happen? You gotta find out that Matt taped you? You gonna turn on him? Uh, that seems like a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of the prescribed role. Their role? The person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. This is... This is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. Okay, you... Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, no, 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 I, uh, didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ugh, this, that egomaniacal. That's not good. It's not good for your for your health to be so aggravated. I know, I know. Trust me, my doctors told me about it. You won't live very long if you let yourself let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less comforting. I don't really care about all that extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience, try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close, to, and closed, so you're going to have to work to get to talk, get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. All right. Um... Do I present the camera now? But no! I mean... 
So clearly he's not gonna say Matt's name, right? He's gonna say someone else. Uh, oh, is it gonna be, is he gonna say it's Adrian? Is that what's gonna happen? What do I pre present? I mean, we did get a contradiction, right? When we present, uh, we're impressed over here, and then you said the client did something untrustworthy and already broke the rules. Uh, I don't think we have to present anything. Maybe we... It's one of those press again type things. Till s no, 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 no. Till something new shows up. Okay. No, no, no. I keep forgetting the button. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. The person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relations with the client who cannot understand their assigned role. It's my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid you, we cannot proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think, really. In that case, I believe I'm prepared to disclose this information, the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust all, all over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. And that is the reason I'm here today. Uh... Okay. I kind of thought we were proceeding. Yes? What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness! What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Wonkarita? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. And I saw that coming. What? Objection. Yes, objection. Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it's Adrian Andrews. What? Okay. So he played Edgeworth, pretty much. This can't be. That f on the phone earlier. What's going on here? I guess is that Mr. Killer gets to just stab Miss Edgeworth in the back. Stab Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. Killer told him a different name, Mountain Guard, perhaps. Why right, you always record your calls? I knew it. This this is outrageous. I was deceived. The witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. Dirk, girl, you, Shelley the Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defend the defendant at the moment is Matt and Guard. Am I correct? All I wish to do is help uh, procure his acquittal. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecutor has failed to provide a motive and has, instead, provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, definitive of all we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. Killer's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Mattengard is innocent. It seems to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. Uh, what now? With the way this is going, a guard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And then guard, my client, I know he's guilty. 
Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shit that the killer is certainly lying under oath. It wasn't... It, it wasn't me! Listen, everyone, please! That testimony just now, it was all one big lie! Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me. It was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. Tequila himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and the button, donning the Nickelback Samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Pax was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her. You wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. Understandably, I would say you have plenty of reason to want them both dead. I... no. Mr. Wright! You... you know the truth! Tell them! Tell them the real story! Who the real killer is, tell them! Please, help me! I mean, shit. Yeah, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yeah, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw the chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Hmm. I do not feel right at all. Even selecting request the verdict. Like, I'm assuming it would lead to a game over. It, I kind of want to see what would happen. It might even just continue, like Edgeworth would object and somehow get the trial going again. It just doesn't feel right, though, to actually, like... Even if it's a fantasy game, it's like, I, I wouldn't want to do that to, to the Adrian. Like, yeah, we got off on the wrong foot earlier, but at the same time, like, I totally am sympathetic to her in, like, almost every regard now. Um, she really messed up with the evidence and stuff like that when she was trying to frame Matt. But, man, um, I mean, I guess we could request the verdict to see what happens. I'm going to save. That's really not going to make me feel good at all. Your Honor, a defense request. It's no use. I can't. It feels like I lost my voice. Phoenix, I can't do it, Mia. Oh, okay, so it's not even... I can't accept it not guilty. You're a lawyer. I know, but... But Manigard is a killer, a murderer. I can't... I can't let him get away with this. Okay, fine. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than the guard. I mean, that's actually 100% true. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that this is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten a guard convicted so many times over... And but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take the ver this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I I trust him. Yes, you do. Stop reading my mind, ghost woman! Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. The Killer. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but... That witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet, sir. I'm just beginning. To see through witnesses, lies, and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still one more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well, the trial will continue. Miss Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. De Killer. Right away, Your Honor.
Has the verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk to you a little bit more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need from me? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. Killer, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures, is it any wonder no one likes going to court? Well, going to court is a horrible experience that no one wants to actually probably do. As I've already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did, and did it to frame another for the crime. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene, Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and the planting of the knife and the button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is most unexpected turn events. For, um, the fifth time now. However, this time, everything has finally been revealed. Objection! Will you shut up, Your Honor? Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Edgeworth. We still have the cross-examination to do, but you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question a witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I will expose the lies that I also been... Uh, also beneficial... Of that also beneficial testimony, I suppose? I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us! Alright, I guess we'll just press the living bejesus out of you again. Dots! What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something that waste more time. Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Eek! No, 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 no! I'm not thinking... Mr. Wright! Yes? You... You... You want to kill me! You want me dead, don't you? What? Yes! I mean, no! Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty! <laughs> Witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your client, are they not? <laughs> oh, man. I would like to- I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be a very effective at my job. Ah, yeah. Well, the change of occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. The Killer. And the fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought that they, they could run away from their guilt. So now you're just, like, really lying. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police, I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy. My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. It's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Hmm. It really... It's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not with without him being here. I'm gonna assume he's not being truthful. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That's correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my service, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your, for your alibi too. Uh, no, I already told you. I have no intention of using your services ever, maybe. Why does he keep looking at me like that? <laughs> like I'm the one on trial here. Uh. Apparently the judge thinks we're out for him, and we might be, from the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room, all my client knows, uh, all of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. 
I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. What's odd? So why do you think your client did that? <sighs> what do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around with the scene of the crime is pretty risky. And why would someone who has requested a murder go to the crime scene anyways? Hmm, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Ngard. If that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill. That is all. And to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is no is so my client may escape blame. To protect themselves is my uh, them is them is my duty. Hmm. You know if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. And that's all you have to testify? Yes, I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? As in your plan to as in you plan to continue. I must, as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become a fourth and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like to uh, like a new life, Mr. Attorney? Excuse me? Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine, really. Are you really now? <laughs> I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All I can do now is expose the lies. That's true. However, you realize that that will be very bad for our client, right? Uh, I'm very confused. Uh, but the one thing I know for sure is that I can't let this trial end yet. Alright, well, I guess... We either have to press again, or I have to present something. Uh, which one was it that... It was this one, that Ed, uh, Edgeworth was like, That's odd. So there's probably something here we either have to press again, or present something. Uh, you know what, though? We'll do that next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.